Should we believe everything that's going on with LJ McRae's recruitment and the rumors about where he's going to go? We're going to talk about it right now on Locked on Seminoles. You are Locked on Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into another episode of Locked on Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith. Today's episode is going to be fun because we get to talk about my two favorite categories all in one episode, and that is recruiting and stats. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace, the Jace case. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of IVE, antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. So yes, once again, we are going to talk recruiting and we are going to talk stats, Duke, Florida State, and also a little extra because of the surrounding unknown that there is with Riley Leonard, the quarterback for Duke. He got hurt against Notre Dame a couple weeks ago, didn't play, although he did warm up against NC State, a game NC State lost to Duke, even though they didn't play their starting quarterback, 24-3. But that's another story. That's NC State's problem. Here's the deal. Today's show is going to start off with segment one. We're going to talk about LJ, his decisions coming up. Then two, we're going to talk specifically about what I think is the best matchup in a really unique situation, because you don't hear people talk about this very often. If ever, Duke, their offensive line and their running game is pretty good going up against Florida State's front seven. There's quite a few guys that at least have a chance to go to the NFL combine, if not be drafted on both teams. Duke's got a really good running back we're going to talk about. But the quarterback situation, and that's segment three, who is Henry Beelan? I didn't know either, and I had to do research on it, and it it is what it is. But that's a guy we're going to talk about because more than likely, barring something unforeseen, he's going to play against Florida State. That's at least a rumor based on what little I've found out through Duke, reading some tea leaves, et cetera. Of course, Duke head coach Mike Elko is giving zero information about Riley Leonard and why would he? So we just kind of have to guess. Uh, if he plays, what I'm going to say in segment three is completely irrelevant. But again, we're guessing. So let's start off with LJ McRae, defensive lineman, national recruit. Some people have him a four star. Some people have him as a five star. Daytona Beach Mainland High School. I saw him play a few weeks ago. I interviewed him. He made it abundantly clear, abundantly, that it was still Georgia, Auburn, Florida State, Florida, and Miami, any of the five. He was good with any of the five, and surprisingly, his parents, he said, and unsolicited, had given him the okay on any of the five as well. So basically, I had no idea where he was going. He's getting ready to decide this weekend or right after. I forget the exact day, but I think it's this weekend. Here's the deal. And this is something that's not completely unusual in the industry that I'm in with recruiting, but there's a lot of information out there. Some of it's going to be good. Some of it's going to be bad, but as many different things, and I've heard some direct stuff about what's going on. There's too many different variables here that conflict and have come out in 24 to 72 hour period. LJ was confused a little bit, admitted it, and needed to figure it out, was taken on officials, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, His Florida State official visit was the seventh against Tech. They've moved up. Odell Hagens has done a great job, but he's been a great recruiter forever, so that's not exactly shocking. But here's the bigger point. It's still a lot of different information from different schools. So I'm going to use the LJ McRae recruitment as something I'm going to use for the rest of the time I do this podcast. It's probably going to be years. Real simple. When it gets down to the nitty gritty with an elite recruit that power programs are after, and in this particular case, click programs, meaning schools that have humongous fan bases that follow and consume recruiting, there's going to be more information because there's more money to be made. I'm just telling it like it is. I don't know what is or isn't correct. I'm not saying I do because I've heard different things, but there is a very wide gap in the information that I've heard. LJ's a real honest kid. 
he's A to B as it gets. He, he's, he's like the sun. It comes up every day. It's consistent. Be careful with what you hear, good or bad, about Florida State. And to be honest, I hate saying this because it kind of goes against the recruiting industry. It's like I'm turning in my recruiting analyst card. We all kind of need to wait for him to announce. That's where we're at. It's not going to be easy, but people are still going to sell it like, oh, I got the info. No, you don't. This is going to be a signing day deal anyway. I've mentioned that in prior podcasts. Let's say he committed to Florida or Florida State or Auburn or whatever it is. He's still going to take phone calls. I'll bet you money. Florida State is like nobody else or no different than anybody else. Excuse me. You're not going to stop recruiting that kid. 6'5", 275, and he's freaking playing outside linebacker right now in high school. Yes, I said 275. This is a very unique situation. Somebody's, I don't know who, but somebody's spitting out some negative information here, meaning not true because there's too many different things going around. Everybody needs to chill on the predictions with LJ. He's announcing soon enough. When he does, we will know. But even then, when... He's interviewed by School X, whichever school is fortunate enough to gain LJ McRae's commitment. You're still not going to get the whole story. That'll be after signing day. I can assure you that because there's just a lot of things going on. And he's still got five schools coming at him. Usually at this point with a kid that's still undecided, it's one, two, maybe three. He's at five. It's just an unusual recruitment. And again, there's a lot of money to be made with clicks because there's not a lot of guys left on the board. So all the services are looking for anything they can on all these message boards, et cetera. I don't know which one's given the best info and which one's given the worst. I, I don't know where the kid's going, but be very careful about what you consume and what one believes. Uh, also of note with this big game with Duke, just as an extra recruiting thing here, I haven't delved into it a lot, but as I've been saying, Go by what recruits do, not what they say. And that also applies to the underclassmen, the kids that are sophomores and juniors in high school right now. Florida State's got a bunch of kids coming to campus for this new game. It's a night game. It's nationally televised. It's a big deal. Let's, let's go. You know what I mean? Like this is, this is a big deal. Florida State needs to have an opportunity to have as many kids as they can on campus for big games. Top 25 matchup. Why not? And again, I'll get into why I think – the numbers for the ranking are a little off if Riley Leonard didn't play. I'm going to talk about that in segment two here in just a second. But Florida State needs to take advantage of it. And like uh, um, the guy I know pretty well, Solomon Thomas, I know he's supposed to be there. Among others, he's a five-star kid, an offensive lineman that ironically LJ, LJ went up against the game that I went to see him. Solomon plays for Reigns High School up in Jacksonville. He's class of 25, but they're going to have a ton of kids. They'll probably have 30-plus kids on campus from the class of 27, 26, 25, 24, all together, like freshmen up. It's just, it's a different deal now with recruiting. So again, though, just to rehash, we'll find out soon enough with LJ. It is what it is. Uh, coming up in segment two, we're going to talk a little bit about my second favorite thing, and that's stats. The rushing game for Duke is better than you would think. It's better than what I thought, and I've seen them play live, but I also have some concerns for them, and it's tactical. It's situational, and quite honestly, it's quarterback, and that's segment three. So we're going to kind of go into that a little bit. Unfortunately, I don't see how Duke is going to, for them at least, how they're going to kind of like over overrun Florida State's ability to get after it. I just don't think they have that ability. So with that being said, uh, segment two, our sponsor representing us, Jace Case, Jace Medical. If you've had a situation where you needed something – medically and quick, whether it's something from an infection, maybe it's something very basic that you kind of take for granted, but it's a problem. Here's an opportunity that you and or your family or somebody that you know could utilize. The Jace case is a personalized emergency medical kit that contains five essential antibiotics and they treat most common and deadly bacterial infections. You can also customize your case and add additional life-saving medications based on your need, unique needs, such as if you have a specific allergy, you could look into it when you speak with them, come up with something that is best fit for you. And again, whether it's you, your family, or somebody that you know. Jace Medical now offers custom mobility to your Jace case with dozens of add-on medications. Choose the medications that best fit you and your family's unique needs. Make sure that you continually work to expand 
these offerings and all the different kind of opportunities that they go with. Again, you, you check it out yourself. Make sure you understand what you're looking for and do the best for you. Here's the other thing. It's pretty simple to get there. JaceMedical.com. That's J-A-S-E Medical.com. Enter code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount on your order. That's promo code locked on at J-A-S-E Medical.com. The second item today is FanDuel. FanDuel is also sponsoring our show today, and thank you to them. FanDuel is a sponsor that we were very familiar with. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place five bucks down on the table. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, with FanDuel. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to do it than right now. We're in the middle of the NFL season uh, just as an example, and that's probably the number one thing people like to gamble on. But at the same time, this is a situation where if you want to do NHL, NBA, right, it's October. This is the best time. If you're going to do it as a sports fan, it really doesn't get any better than that. Right now is the time. The app is also an easy thing to use. You can get on it and find what you're looking for in 30 seconds to a minute. No big deal at all. So you can bet on spreads. Uh, player over unders. You could bet on parlays. You could bet on a team. You could just go with quarterbacks, whatever it is you're looking for. FanDuel has an opportunity that you can use. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on, kick off the National Football League season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. The second segment, like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about stats. It's not a rocket science thing but we have to find ways to kind of dig through what they are because injuries happen. Injuries are significant. Injuries change win loss records. Injuries change single games. Look at the Syracuse game last year. Florida State probably would have won that game, but with the injuries Syracuse had, it was probably going to be a blowout, and it was. They just couldn't overcome because they didn't have the playmakers, et cetera, available. Had an offensive lineman was out. They had a couple of key guys on offense to catch the ball, in particular Gatson, their number one guy. They got suffocated. Duke has an interesting situation because Riley Leonard, we think, will not play. We'll see. But if he doesn't, what I'm about to say is still goofy, but I'm just going to state these for the record. They have two running backs that are primarily their, their best ball carriers. That These are the guys that get the football first down, second down, third down situation. Doesn't matter. These are the two guys. Jordan Waters. Jaquez Moore. Waters has 426 yards, nine scores. Moore has 326 and four. Here's the more important thing. Let's talk style to get to those numbers. Waters is give or take 220, and he wants to beat you up. He's kind of an old school, high formation. You know, I'm not saying he's Bo Jackson, but he's, he's a big body kid that will just kind of push the pile. He gave Notre Dame fits. He's given other teams fits. He had an 83-yard run last week against NC State. And while their offense is atrocious at NC State, they still have pretty good defense, defensive players, and they got good scheme, good coaching, all that. He only had 40 yards otherwise, but he still popped an 83-yarder. So he's got some wheels, too. He can make big plays. He's very consistent. If you miss a run gap fit, good luck to you. He will make you pay. And if you try to tackle high, that's you in the ice bath. He's, he's a physical kid. He wants to run through you, not around you. Now, Moore is similar in some ways, but I don't think he's as powerful. And I'm not saying anything wrong with that, but Waters is really powerful. He's going to make some plays too, and they can both catch, but that's not their primary. And here's the big deal. Florida State's front seven, I'm going to mention – all six of the key guys here at D-Tackle because they're all going to be needed in some way, shape, or form, and all of them have size. Just to say them out loud because these guys have earned it. They played better the last few weeks in finding ways to make big plays, although the Syracuse game was incredible compared to the Virginia Tech because they missed a couple key run fits were big plays. Joshua Farmer, Braden Fisk, Dennis Briggs, Fabian Lovett, Malcolm Ray, and Daniel Lyons. That's like the six. And they may move a defensive end inside and in a NASCAR package deal on, on passing downs. But those are the six guys that rotate for the Knowles. They're going to get a workout. Florida State, fortunately, has the depth to go up against Duke's front. They've got a decent offensive line. It's not unreal, but it's pretty good. 
And I think they'll give Florida State at least some trouble at times. The difference here is, again, though, the depth. There's a reason Florida State all time, and this is a great stat, 19-0 against Duke. 19-0. I mean, that's horrific. But Duke has probably about their best team ever this year. Are they great? No. But this is the only chance I think they have. They have to force two or three turnovers, have none themselves, run the ball, and hit a couple big plays. That's why I mentioned all six of the D tackles. They're going to run between the tackles. This is not going to be a rocket science adventure. Downhill, here we come. I don't see how that's going to work. I don't think they have enough speed on the perimeter to scare Florida State. And their secondary played well last week against Syracuse. Also a very important note. I think you're going to see seven in the box, and they're going to play games, safety in, out, in, out, in, out. Uh, Nickel, act like he's going to but They're going to do all those things, try and confuse and get an easy rush towards a running back without being blocked. They're looking for negative plays. It's it's nothing new. But Florida State just has more talent. So I think that's going to be a problem. Maybe it's not going to be grandiose, if you will, on terms and numbers of negative plays, but I think the run stuff percentage will be pretty high. And I also believe that Florida State's going to put them in a lot of second and seven, second and eights. If that was Riley Leonard back there, it might be okay. He's pretty good. He's not great, but he's pretty good. But the kid I'm going to talk about here in just a second, I mean, I'm not picking on him, but it was his first start against NC State, and he was 4-12. We'll get into that in segment three. But if Florida State does well against this run game, which just for the record here, what's their total? Uh, Where are we at? They have 198.5 a game on the ground, which is good. But Riley is a really good runner, too. That's a big part of their game. And he averages over six a carry. But they are technically 19th in the nation. Florida State gives up 141.3, which is only 72nd. But I think both those are kind of switched for this week. Florida State can load up the box because Leonard's probably not going to play. And at the same time, without Leonard's legs, what's Duke really average? I think if they get over 110, they're going to be doing good. And there's a chance they may not hit 250 yards of total offense if this young man has to play his second game and first one on the road that's in an environment like this. I mean, there's only so many places like Dope Campbell, and I'm not, not going against anything with Duke or NC State or anything. It's not the same. This is going to be raucous. It's going to be very difficult for him, and I think they're going to struggle. We'll see. But uh, once again, the key, though, was what have you done for me lately? In Florida State's last game, they gave up 124, and that's a team that had a mobile quarterback in the 80 mob. Duke, on the other hand, they had 194 yards rushing, but 83 was on one carry, and NC State, their quarterback just couldn't. I mean, they started a quarterback for like the first time. Was he ready? Probably not. They're having all kinds of problems on offense. Their defense got left out to dry in the second half. They kind of wilted on the bind. So I'm, I'm not buying that this is a situation where Duke is really that good at running the ball currently. I just wanted to list the stats. Here's the other thing. DeWoach is at 31 tackles, five tackles for loss, three and a half sacks. Bethune is at 28 tackles, two and a half two tackles for loss, and DJ Lunda, who doesn't get talked about enough, me included, 24 tackles. He's at uh, 21 tackles, two tackles for loss, excuse me, and one and a half sacks. Those guys are going to be the ones playing right behind those D tackles. They're going to be busy. I have all the faith in the world. They're going to be fine. I don't think Florida State's got a ton of depth at at D tackle, or excuse me, linebacker, but those three are pretty good. And to my knowledge, they're good to go. I think they're going to eat pretty heavily. Uh, kind of like a smorgasbord on running backs on Saturday. So we'll get into segment three and talk a little bit about Henry Bewin here in a minute. He's a quarterback that not many know about. I'm going to go over a couple of stats and some things I think Florida State is going to do against him in segment three. First off, do note that college, uh, Locked On College Football Live is going to be 11 a.m. this Friday once again. You can check it out here on or on any YouTube channel. All you have to do is go log in or just go to the YouTube channel at 11 o'clock, check it out. And if you can't make it, that's cool. You can download it. They're going to talk about all the big matchups, Florida State, et cetera, across the board. Every big game is going to be highlighted, talk about injuries and different things that have been discussed around the country. So make sure you check it out here on YouTube. Last episode, 
segment is going to be coming up, and it is brought to you by eBay Motors, today's sponsor for segment three. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, just about anything you can think of that you would want inside your car, mechanically, something to make it look better, eBay Motors is an option for you. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, that is, eBay Motors has got you covered. Over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into an MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. All right. Eligibility items, eligible items only, exclusions apply. So let's talk a little bit about the guy that's going into the lion's den, if you will. Um, somebody had to do it. If Riley Winters not playing, and again, that's just with what I'm going, how I'm going with it, they got to start somebody at quarterback, and Henry Bielen's probably not ready. Henry Bielen the fourth. I'm sure he's good. I've heard he's a good athlete, et cetera. But there is no position in sport where experience is more important than quarterback. It just It's just the way it is. Going against Florida State's front and all those guys I just mentioned, I didn't mention those nine guys for fun. And I didn't even get to Verse or Patrick Payton or anybody else on the edge. Those are the obvious. I just mentioned right up the middle for the run game. Well, he was 4-12 for 107 yards, two touchdowns and a pick against NC State. That's terrible. I mean, there's just no nice way to say it. Four out of 12 is 33.3%, one out of three. Now, he did hit a bomb down the left side. I assume he's pretty good at it. I didn't watch the game, but if you're four or 12, I don't need to go back and watch the film. It's just the way it is, man. There are a lot of guys in their first couple of starts sucked. Charlie Ward was not that great. Until about the back half of his senior year, then of course his Heisman winning year in '93 as a fifth-year senior. It takes freaking time. So what do I expect Florida State to do? Come after him. They're going to be somewhat careful about it, especially on first down because they're going to run. They just don't want to give up a long run. But on third and seven, they're going to heat that dude up. Uh, I don't. I just don't think they're going to drop seven. I don't. I think they're going to make him move his feet. And do stupid stuff. Here's an example of why coaches do it. There have been several coaches this year that have tried different things, but dropping eight and critical like fourth down and 10 and stuff just doesn't work. Didn't work for Duke in a game. It didn't work for other teams in a game. It goes both ways. They're going to come after him. And with Florida State speed and as well as the secondary is playing, I don't like the odds of Duke doing very well. And I'm trying to be nice. But, I mean, I'm dishonest. I tell it like it is. I don't think they're going to throw for a buck 50, even if they hit a 50-yard play. I I could be wrong. they got a couple of decent receivers, but timing is everything. Knowing the common denominators with each of your offensive linemen or what they're good at, how they work together. Either you've been standing behind them or you haven't. And I just don't think Bielen going against the Knowles, like Verse is just one of numerous guys that have a chance to play in the NFL for a while. Good luck. So I think this is going to be a lot of situations where it's second and seven, second and eight, like I mentioned, and on third down and five, third and fours. You'll see draws. You'll see every freaking type of screen known to man. And they're going to try to just run horizontal plays where he like fakes, runs, and just tries to throw a real quick where he, and they're not going to tell the kid this, we don't want you making post-snap decisions because we think the ball is going the other way. I would bet my bottom dollar on it. That is the open book for what college coaches do. It's nothing against that kid. It's nothing against what Duke is in a situation to do. But it's unfortunate if Riley Leonard cannot play like I expect. I mean, it'd be better. I'd wish he'd play. Florida State wants to be tested. You want to beat the best. He got banged up against Notre Dame, set out a week, didn't play against NC State. High ankle sprains take for freaking ever. That's rough. 
Uh, hopefully he finishes the year for Duke and does well, but I don't think he's going to play against the Knoll. So anyway, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this game on Thursday, kind of talk about a, a big picture perspective, perhaps on Friday. I'm debating on how I want to do that show, but it's, it's going to be a good night for Florida State on Saturday, barring something happening that I don't know about right now, an injury or something to Florida State. This game should be a double-digit win for the Knowles. That's just the way I see it. And breaking it down numbers-wise, logically, talking to people on the Duke side, I just don't see how that you're going to take your best player and your freaking quarterback out of the lineup and go with a Doak Campbell Stadium and win. Call me, call me crazy. But uh, please like this podcast. Please share it. Please make sure you hit that notification bell. And above all else, if you would, please comment. Let me know if you want to talk about something. Happy to talk about Florida State football and anything else you want to get get going in the world of college football. Everybody have a great night.